morning. Welcome to stu welcome to the community of St. Peter Claver, and especially to all guests joining us today. God resides in each of us. Please recognize his people. Oh, I'm sorry. Please recognize his presence in the people around you with a warm welcome. and raise your voices as we sing our gathering song, Gather Us In. Here in this place, no light is streaming. Now is the darkness vanished away. See in this space, our fears and our dreamings brought here to you in the light of this and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my fault, Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
May your grace, O Lord, we pray at all times, go before us and follow after, and make us always determined to carry out good works through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. reading from the book of wisdom. I prayed and prudence was given me. I pleaded and the spirit of wisdom came to me. I preferred her to scepter and throne and deemed riches nothing in comparison with her, nor did I liken any priceless gem to her, because all gold in view of her is a little sand and before her, silver is to be accounted mire. Beyond health and comeliness, I loved her, and I chose to have her rather than the light, because the splendor of her never yields to sleep. Yet all good things together came to me in her company, and countless riches at her hands. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Fill us with your love, O oh Lord, and we will sing for joy. Fill us with your love, O oh Lord, and we will sing for joy. Teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain wisdom of heart. Return, O oh Lord, how long? Have pity on your servants. Fill us with your love, O oh Lord, and we will sing for joy. Fill us at daybreak with your kindness, that we may shout for joy and gladness all our days. Make us glad for the days when you afflicted us, for the years when we saw evil. Fill us with your love, O oh Lord, and we will sing for joy. Let your work be seen by your servants, and your glory by their children. And may the gracious care of the Lord our God be ours. Prosper the work of our hands for us. Prosper the work of our hands. Fill us with your love, O oh Lord, and we will sing for joy.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, indeed the word of God is living and effective, sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating even between soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and able to discern reflections and thoughts of the heart. No creature is concealed from him, but everything is naked and exposed to the eyes of him, to whom we must render an account. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. <clears throat> As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up, knelt down before him, and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus answered him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not kill, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not defraud, honor your father and your mother. He replied and said to him, Teacher, all of these I have observed from my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, You are lacking in one thing. Go. Sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. At that statement, his face fell, and he went away sad, for he had many possessions. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard is it for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God? The disciples were amazed at his words. So Jesus again said to them in reply, Children, how hard is it to enter the kingdom of God? It is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were exceedingly astonished and said among themselves, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For human beings it is impossible but not for God. All things are possible for God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> In our Gospel today, Jesus tells us of the method of how to get to heaven. Because this man comes to Jesus and his question was in the beginning, he says, good teacher, 
What must I do to inherit eternal life? When we know that, e that eternal life is heaven, is that ultimate goal for us to spend that eternity with God. And so he goes and, he, and the main focus of the gospel is how he asked this man to sell his possessions and give them to the poor. And, so, and then he says, it is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for someone that is rich to enter heaven. So that means for us, everyone who makes above a certain salary is, no, I'm just kidding, it's a joke. But so that's, not, that's not literally what he means. Because even if you maybe you have, uh, maybe you're a little bit wealthier than others, you can still enter heaven. Because at the end he says, for human beings it's impossible. It's literally impossible for a camel to fit through the eye of a needle, which is it's big enough for a thread to fit in. But then he says, but not for God. All things are possible for God. And that's how he ends the gospel. But this actually, that's not the only message in today's gospel. To answer this, this man's question of how do I get to heaven? What must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus actually gives three different things that kind of instructions to do to, to attain that goal, that reward, the heavenly reward of heaven. And so, the first, of course, he says, you know the commandments, and he names off the Ten Commandments. And so that's the first thing. And this man thought he was good because he was following the Ten Commandments, but that was the bare minimum. And so he says, I've been doing all of these commandments. You know, you shall not kill, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, and so forth. He says, I've been doing all of these things since I was young. Then the next thing he says is the focus of the gospel, but Jesus says, Go and sell what you have and give to the poor. And this doesn't literally mean sell everything you have unless God is calling you in that way. But to not to have a worldly attachment to things. And if you have more uh, material things, you're more likely to be attached to those things. And to use those, those blessings that we have, those, um, those material blessings, to help others, to give to the poor. So that's the second thing that Jesus is saying. And the third thing, which is very easy to overlook, he says, go sell what you have, give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And then right after that, he says, then come, follow me. Because so that's the third thing that Jesus says, to come and follow Jesus. And that line is very easily overlooked because it's very short. It's just four words. And he goes on back to talking about the wealth. And so Jesus gives us this guide. Not just in this gospel, but in other gospels. But especially this as well. He tells us how to do it. And many times when we think of Jesus telling us to do stuff. Or, or the church um, having, having rules or things like that. Or God telling us what to do. People generally think, I have to do this because God tells me to do this. And that's true. But God tells us to do these things for a reason. For example, the Ten Commandments. These are things for us not to do because they're harmful to us and they're harmful to others. It's not bad just because God said so. But God tells us these are not good because they're harmful. They hurt us. They hurt others. And they hurt our relationship with God. When he says, give what you or sell what you have and give to the poor, it's not just to get rid of things that we have. But he says, and give to the poor. So you're benefiting the poor. You're helping others in need that might not have as much as you. That, not, might not, that might not be blessed in that way as you are. And so he's calling us to help them. To not be attached to our worldly things. But to use those gifts, those blessings that we have to help others. And so there's a purpose for that too. For ourselves, but also for others. To help others as well. To detach ourselves and make sure that our number one priority is God and not our things or our money. And to also help others. And of course, the third thing he says, follow me. I think that's the easiest thing to understand. Because Christ does not want us to follow him just so he can have a lot of followers. In fact, his 12 disciples that he chose to follow him were all people that were deemed as very imperfect people, very flawed human beings. But instead, he, he chooses... He asks us to follow him because he wants to lead us to 
what's best for us. He wants to ultimately lead us to heaven. And so he gives us these things to do that's to inherit eternal life. He tells this man, you must do these things and then you can inherit eternal life. And as an extension of him telling this man, he tells us this as well today through our gospel. And so today we reflect on these things. We reflect on what are the areas that we need to work on. For this man, it was the selling of his possessions and giving to the poor. The gospel never says he didn't do it. It just says he went away sad, for he had many possessions. And I, I like to think that maybe he reflected and came back to Christ and decided to do what Jesus asked him to do. And all of us struggle with different things out of this whole list that Jesus gave us. We all have our different struggles. We're all sinners. But the important thing is that we do our best and we turn towards God every time we fail. That we choose Christ. And then when we, when we do fail, we repent and turn back to Christ. So today we reflect on our gos this gospel. We reflect on the things that maybe we struggle with a little bit more. We focus on how do we do this, how do we do this better? How do we reflect on this to become better Christians, to become better followers of God? And ultimately, if we do these things, then Christ assures us that we will inherit eternal life and our reward will be great in heaven. Let us stand to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead the life of the world to come. Amen. Lord God, you fill our days with blessings and answer to our prayers. We turn to you now in our need. That the church embody the word of God and help all believers to know the saving power of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That possessions never become an obstacle to faith and that those who have taken the vow of poverty enjoy the freedom in their choice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That this holy assembly be aware of those in our midst who suffer. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the special intentions of Helen de la Cruz and Herman Dome, may, your, may our Lord in his mercy bless them today and always. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of Ted Oring, Regina Cardenas, Pamela Viena Cinco, and John and Patricia Ryan, that they experience the resurrection of Christ into eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick and are in need of healing, especially for Lori Hufford. Lucas Miller, Julie Milo McGee, Stephen Wendell, and Digna Garner, 
that they receive grace and strength. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For those who have gone before us and await the kingdom, especially for Remedios Anselmo and Richard Norse, that they find rest from their labors and peace in the loving embrace of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, God of the harvest, the abundance of your grace inspires us to present our needs to you. Hear our prayers and help us to listen for the answer that will surely come through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our music during the presentation of the gifts is Come Follow Me. Sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours, that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his, to his disciples, saying, <clears throat> Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O oh Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as you await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. 
Let us offer each other the sign of peace. of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Our communion hymn is Loving and Forgiving. Earth, 
I'm so grateful, love of God for us. As far as east is from the west, the Lord takes our sins from us. Loving and forgiving are you, O Lord. Slow to anger, rich in kindness, Loving and forgiving are you. Don't know no bees, pachem, pachem. Don't know no bees. Pachem, no, 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 this pachem, pachem, dona, no, this pachem, dona, no, this pachem, pachem. Dona nobis pachem. Dona nobis pachem, pachem. Dona nobis pachem. Dona nobis Pachem, pachem, dona nobis, pachem. Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us shares of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. And please be seated. 
I first invite, before the announcements, I invite those bringing communion to the sick or homebound to please come forward. May the Lord bless you all in your ministry as you bring the body of our Lord Jesus Christ to those who are unable, who are unable to be present with us here physically in this holy, holy Eucharist. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. announcements. Our first announcement, um, we ask that you please support our preschool and kindergarten by attending their multi-restaurant fundraiser this Tuesday, October 12th. Um, flyers are needed um, so that our school can receive a portion of the proceeds that are, and the flyer can be found in this weekend's bulletin. Um, and the fundraiser covers um, three restaurants next to each other, East Coast Pizza, Baja Fresh, and Yogurt Land. And next, um, there are a lot of things that are kind of happening or starting up back in the parish, so I'll just name them all. And if any of these you're interested in, um, the information can all be found in the parish bulletin. Um, so the things are um, ultra server, there's the ultra server meeting and training this Wednesday, October 13th. Um, the, pu the public square rosary rally next Saturday, October 16th. All of us levels of faith formation um, from elementary school formation to um, youth ministry and confirmation. Um, it's starting the week of October 17th and registrations are due this week. Uh, Bishop Barron's video presentation, The Creed Part 2 on October 18th. Eucharistic Adoration resuming in November and adores are needed for this. And lastly, donations of indi individually wrapped and sealed candies for trunk or treat. Um, if you're interested in any of these, um, more information can be found in the parish bulletin. And next, we have a save the date. Uh, join us as our parish begins its 50th anniversary jubilee year on November 14th at 11 a.m. with mass, uh, followed by a box lunch, games, and a ministry fair. So that will uh, be on November 14th, and we'll give more information as we get closer to that date. And our last announcement is that if you are um, 60 years or above and in need, our Sa Society of St. Vincent de Paul is on the plaza after mass with the $50 grocery gift card, or, or multiple gift cards, um, while supplies last. And everyone is asked to stop by their table to learn more about their ministry. Thank you. Please stand for the final blessing. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Our closing hymn is Lead Me, Lord. Blessed are the poor in spirit, longing for the Lord. For God's coming kingdom shall be theirs. Blessed are the sorrowing, for they shall be consoled. And the meek shall come to rule the world. 